There we go. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Uh, how, how you doing, Nate? Uh, how was uh, how was the holidays and everything? Oh man, everything was good. Uh, can't complain. Just, uh, living a good life. <laughs> good and Christmas went well. Everything went well. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, so, where boats are you from, anyway? Uh, I'm living in Kentucky right now. Um, I'm actually from Tennessee, not too far away from here. To say, yeah, uh, you, you're from Tennessee, but you're living in Kentucky now. So, how how is everything over there right now, like with the restrictions and whatnot? Uh, Kentucky's pretty restricted right now. Uh, we live right on the Indiana line, so um, Indiana's pretty open. I think they're down to maybe 50 percent capacity, but uh, they got some New Year's parties and things like that going on tonight, so they're not completely shut down. Yeah, yeah, I, I can only imagine. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, where I'm from, it's uh, you know, New Year's is kind of boring this year, but uh, it's all right. I mean, it gives me more time to focus on myself and just kind of hang around and. Uh, not go and get in trouble or not. So it's all right, but uh, that's good to hear, man. Um, <clears throat> thanks again for coming on the podcast. I appreciate it. I know things didn't kind of go our way yesterday. Um, <clears throat> sorry to hear about things going on with the car or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, glad to have everything working out today. So uh, we'll, we'll get this rolling, man. All right. Sounds good, man. That's good. Um, yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, talk about Tag MMA. Are you still currently uh, training there or? Yeah, Tag MMA is my home gym. Um, the, my actual coach of 10, going on 11 years now, he runs that gym. It's in Morganfield, Kentucky, uh, about 30 minutes from where I live. I've also started cross-training this year at uh, Nice Guy Submission. Uh, they got a bunch of Bellator veterans, the UFC vets, mm-hmm. uh, EBI contestants, uh, three or four black belts up there. So I, I've been cross-training over there quite a bit. And uh, those are the only two gyms I really go to. That's my team. Nice, nice. And um... – I know we just kind of touched upon how things were going over at um, over in your area over there, but uh, um, so you're still able to train 100 percent, or what? What's going? What's the situation going on at the gym? Yeah, man, 100 uh, percent. Uh, I think when everything first started, I think things were shut down maybe three or four weeks. Yeah. But uh, you know, we're still running and doing what we can, so there's never really any down downtime. Uh, yeah, everything's back to normal now. Okay. That's good. That's good to hear. Uh, I just had, uh, I had another guy on the podcast yesterday and we were kind of talking about that, how some certain parts of the States, uh, and I'm just talking about States in general, I'm not trying to be biased. I'm, I'm Canadian here. Uh, but, uh, just talking to the States, you know, it's really, really bad right now. And, uh, we're kind of discussing about how certain fighters are like training in their own home or in their house, whatever it is, because they're, they can't train in their gym. I mean, you know, whether they get a fight coming up and they don't want to, you know, they don't want to risk it. Right. Um, is that kind of something that kind of goes through your head a lot? Like you don't want to get sick and then pull it, you know, you have to pull your fight like a week or two prior. Yeah, man, especially, uh, you know, we get tested three or four times, you know, on fight week. Uh, that's something you definitely worry about when you've already cut the weight and, you know, you've put in six to eight weeks of hard training. Uh, right now I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. You know, uh, we've been pretty healthy. If someone gets sick or anything, they don't show up and, you know, they quarantine to their house or whatever. So we're all pretty good about that. The only time I worry about it is actually on fight week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I guess like uh, a lot of fighters have kind of mentioned the same thing, you know, it's, you can't, you can't let something kind of uh, impact your life like that. You have to just, you know, if someone gets sick, they, you know, you do your best that hopefully you don't get sick and you can't let it control your life, I guess, like all the, the whole mental aspect, I, I suppose. Yeah, especially with uh, – there's so many opportunities in the UFC right now. You know, they're having cards every week. Uh, you can't really take the time to, you know, not be working hard. You're going to miss out on your opportunity. Yeah, yeah, and and that's just it. I mean, with all the pullouts and uh, fights kind of falling through and whatnot, um, I mean, I know that uh, – I don't know if you heard. I think that Leon Edwards and uh, Hemzat Shamaya fight, I mean, again, I don't know if this is like a – I don't know if this is kind of like a, a curse of Tony and Khabib 2.0. I'm not <laughs> – uh but it's, it's hard already, to look like that yeah <laughs> um but yeah i mean there's a lot of these opportunities for a lot of fighters i mean just as yourself i mean you you've had two I, two fights in the ufc so you know i mean guys like yourself you there's great opportunity right now to like jump in if, if you're healthy and ready to go um but uh, talking on that note uh congrats again on your uh on your fight with luke sanders uh with cool hand luke I mean, obviously he wasn't a cool hand that night. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know like you kind of touched upon it. So getting that, finally getting that finish in, within the UFC, does that kind of help cement your kind of show your skills that, Hey, I can get, I, I want to kind of show what, what I can do. And, and you finally got that chance to, to do it. 
Yeah, man. Uh, I just I really enjoyed winning. Of course, everyone does and getting the finish, but just the kind of fight that it was too. Uh, you know, we both come out the fist fight. Uh, I think that gets him a lot of fans. That's the kind of fighter I want to be. You know, I like being in the mix. Uh, good chin. Uh, I feel pretty good about my power at 135 too. Uh, you know, those are the kind of fights I want to be in. Of course. So, you know, you're, so that's where you want to be is 135. You don't want to go up or down or anything like that. Yeah. 135 is, um, what I've signed on the fight. Uh, my, both of my fights, it's been 135 in my contract. Uh, I don't know what happened, man. I, I'm hoping uh, I can finally get one at 35. Uh, Luke said two weeks out that he couldn't make 35. So we ended up catch waiting at 40. Um, you know, right board dropped out of my first fight. So they had to bring somebody in short notice, went up to 45 for that fight. Yeah, 35 is definitely where I want to be. Well, that must be kind of disappointing to not be able to get a guy like Ray Borg. I mean, that would have kind of shot you right up in the rankings almost. I mean, he only fought for a title like three or four, about two or three years ago. So, um, must yeah, and it's, uh, he's definitely a veteran, man. And um, Luke Sanders has fought six or seven times in the UFC now. So I, I feel like they either believe in me or they hate me. It's one or the other. But I'm getting good guys, good veterans. And, uh, you know, it's a fast track to the top. So I'm okay with it. I think he froze here. I think he froze. I probably, probably froze myself. All right. Did I lose you? Oh, yeah, I think. I, yeah, no, I lost you, I think. <laughs> I don't know how we got that there. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I could see. I know, like, I, I was like wondering, is am I frozen too in his perspective? So I just didn't want to keep rambling on in case you missed any. <laughs> but um yeah, definitely. I think that uh, I, I definitely think that's good for you. And you know, the guy like Lou Sanders, I mean, that first round, he's just coming in, just throwing those haymakers, just throwing a lot of power. But you seem to have, have the, the ability to kind of weather that storm and be able to get him and, and get that, that finish. So does that kind of show that, you know, your future opponents like, hey, hey, like, you know, I can I can hang in with you and, you know, I might be new to the UFC, but, you know, look out, you know. Yeah, uh, he hit hard. You know, he was an explosive guy. We kind of expected that for him to come in and try to get me out of there pretty quick. He hadn't fought in a year and a half. You know, you, I think he wanted to get me out pretty quick, and he didn't want to go to those later rounds, and I knew I was in shape. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it really worked out, and we're big on game planning around the gym. So everything kind of went to plan, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then obviously then you got that, those 50 Gs. So uh, is there was there any like special way that you got to celebrate with those 50 Gs? Did you get to spend any of it yet? Or Yeah, man, I actually I bought a new car. So uh, I got that one. That's the one I'm, I'm just trying to make sure everything's working all right with it. I got a uh, 2017 uh, Ford Mustang. So very spent nice. a little bit of it. <laughs> Feeling good, though. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, I know my friend, I know if my friend that ever listens to this podcast, he's going to be so jealous. He's such a Mustang guy. He's like his dream. <laughs> he wants one. Uh, so <laughs> it's, yeah, old. man, I love it. <laughs> either you get to celebrate either you buy your car or you buy a house or you spend it on your girl. I don't know. You, you give your three picks there. So uh, the girl's always going to get some, no matter what, you know, she's already, uh, she makes sure that happens. <laughs> mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, I mean, like, me just reading uh, very carefully, I did my homework and I hope this is accurate, but like wrestling kind of being your foundation, um, is it always something that when you look for the finish, is this something, do you always like to go for the submissions? I know you've had some knockouts. So is that, is a submission something that you, that you favor over a knockout or do you just care? You just want to win? Like what, what's your mindset? Uh, I used to use my wrestling more offensively, especially my amateur career. I think just getting more experience, you know, I'm a little bit more comfortable in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I use it more for takedown defense. Uh, my first fight was a lot of using my takedown defense. Luke tried to take me down once or twice in some exchanges. Uh, yeah, man, I like to put on exciting fights, and uh, that's getting in the pocket and, and throwing real hard, trying to land those shots. Uh, so I, I would say my wrestling background is really just the more of the uh, sprawl and brawl type deal. Yeah, definitely. And I know that you can really swing and everything. Um, now, I mean, what, you know, you got two, you know, you got two wins in the UFC now, so you got a little bit of leverage here. So is there anyone that you, that you have in mind that you want to, that you want to fight? Or is there anyone that they've kind of given any names that they've given you that you're interested in? Uh, they haven't really given me any names. Um, I really haven't gotten a call with more time than four weeks. I think I got four weeks to train for Luke Sanders. So, I mean, it happens all so fast. Uh, uh, they haven't told me anybody. I know Sean O'Malley is looking for a fight in February. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's coming off of a loss. Uh, I think he's 
12 and one. I'm 13 and one. I mean, we can make that happen. Uh, I called out Adrian Yanez, but I think he actually got booked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm open to really anyone. Yeah. I think, uh, I think two of those guys would be really good guys for you to fight. I mean, they're all kind of, I think in the same kind of range. Um, actually I've had, uh, Adrian Yanez on the podcast and, uh, yeah, he's, he's really coming in. He really wants to make a name for himself too. So I think that'd be a kind of a nice explosive fight for you as well. I think that'd be a fireworks for sure. He likes to stand bang. I think you would, uh, love to give it, get a piece of piece of him as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, Sean O'Malley, I mean, let's just talk about that guy for real quick. Cause you brought up his name. Mm-hmm. So in his last fight, I mean, as you, in your opinion, as a fighter, do you think that he lost because, Chito Vera was just a better fighter, or do you think it was just that that leg, leg or knee injury? What do you think really happened in that fight? Watching the fight, man, I thought Sean was controlling the range. Uh, I thought he was landing the more harder strikes. Uh, anything can happen in a fight, but my money would go back on Sean O'Malley. You know, I think it's unfortunate what happened, and Cheeto jumped on it, put him away. That's what you got to do. You know, uh, that win bonus means a lot, so you got to jump on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of controversy on that. Like everyone's like, oh, you know, the hype train's over, and it's like, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you know, like no, I don't agree with that at all. Man, he looked really good in there. To be honest, uh, he was controlling everything, and you've seen how good Cheeto is uh, in his Jose Aldo fight. You know, he was he was getting really close to winning that fight. So. Mm-hmm. But then again, I mean, I think Jose Aldo kind of just sat on his back the last round and really kind of like took him into the deep waters. So I don't know. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no one likes to see a fight yeah, yeah, that's, that way, but that's all right. Um, you know, he's a, he's a legend. He can do whatever he wants, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So there's a, yeah, couple... yeah. And I, I was born for Jose too. So yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so those are the kind of guys that you want to fight. So um, is there, you know, do you want to get back in as soon as possible? Like, do, you know, are you looking at January, February in that range? Uh, probably more February, March. Um, yeah. I am doing a little bit of rehab on some certain things that I'm not really going to disclose for everybody, but uh, just working through it. Um, should be February or March. I should be ready to go. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that they've uh, they haven't really been doing a whole lot of booking uh, during those months, so hopefully we'll get to hear something for uh, for a fight for you. And um, actually, this, this has been a question I've been asking everybody, uh, just because uh, you know it's a huge you know it's a huge fight. Uh, you probably might know who I'm going to talk about, but Poirier and McGregor too. Uh, your predictions of what do you, how do you see the fight going down, man? Uh, I think it's going to last a little bit longer, but I, I still got to go with Connor. Uh, just style wise, I think anyone that's going to actually stand in front of Connor is probably going to have a hard time outside of you know that big power shot. I think it's definitely going to be Connor putting him away though. Yeah, and and I and I have to tend to agree with that. And uh, I don't know if that's the reason why Connor picked this fight because he knows that Poirier's not the kind of guy that's just gonna try to take him down the whole fight. Um, I know everyone kind of shits on Connor's uh, takedown defense, but honestly, I don't <laughs> think it's actually that bad. Um, no. I actually got legit defense. It's just his gas tank that he's got to work on. Um, but I mean, with that, you know, with McGregor, uh, I mean, I guess I heard that Khabib said like, oh, they're he's willing to give them the belt and they can fight for the title. I mean, even if Connor does win that belt, I mean, you got like Charles o- Oliveira, like he's knocking on the door saying, you know, I mean, he, I don't know, man. Like I never saw him as a, uh, a true contender until I saw him in lightweight. And I was like, Holy shit. Who's this guy? Like he went right from like, uh, I don't know, to like legit guy. Like I scary. I think he could be, be could be, I think he can be Connor easily. He could be Corey easy. I don't know. I mean, that's a tough yeah. for Connor. Is he going to give up the bell again? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a Charles Oliveira fan, man. I uh, I think the last place Connor wants to be is on his back with Charles Oliveira on top of him. Uh, that Michael Chandler Dan Hooker fight, you know, that's going to be another contender fight coming up. I think Mike Chandler probably needs one win, and he'll be fighting for the title against probably Poirier or McGregor. And Justin Gates is still a monster too. You know, he's sitting out there no fight book too. The the lightweight division, man, it's stacked. Absolutely. Um. But yeah, so uh, I, I do want to kind of just uh, uh, lastly, just kind of focus on your division here, you know, at the 135. I mean, huge changes in the 135 division. I mean, in the last two years, it's just been insane. You know, uh, Peter Yan is is controlling everything in that division. Um, I mean, how do you see the that top five role, uh, come, kind of coming together? I mean, him and uh, Aldo fought for the uh, belt and obviously the other guy won. So, I mean, what who 
who, who do you think deserves to get that shot? Do you think it's Aljamain Sterling? You know, you got whole guy, a whole good bunch of guys mixed in there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Sterling's probably next up. Uh, I'm a really big fan of Aljamain Sterling, so I would actually pick him to win that fight against Jan. I really think Jose was doing pretty well until his gas tank, which has always been kind of questionable in those later rounds, kind of gave out. Yeah. Uh, not to say that I'm not a Peter Jan fan either. You know, he's a monster. Really, everyone in the top 10, top 15 are monsters. Even, uh, you know, Dominic Cruz is getting a little older, but he's still a contender. TJ Dillashaw is getting ready to come back. Uh, Corey Sanhagen, he's getting ready to fight. Frankie Edgar. I mean, there's so many. There's a good mix of young guys and uh, vets. You know, this division's in a good spot. Yeah, yeah. And, you you know, you, talking about um, being in the 135 division and talking about how you got all these good guys lined up in your division, does that kind of give you more motivation? Does that make, get you really excited to know that, you know, when I eventually get to the top, I can fight these guys? Like, Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and I, I think the, the division being so good, it's creating a lot of buzz too. So you just want to have your name thrown in the mix with those guys. Uh, you want to be a part of, you know, something great. And this division, there's nothing that's really um, – separates they're right there at the top uh 10 through 15 15 through 20 like you said adrian yanez he's a really good striker and i mean we're close to the back of the 20s you know what i mean the whole division it's really stacked yeah and i mean it's a young division that's i think that's the big part is there's a lot of young guys i mean a lot of guys in their 20s which i think what they kind of need and to help create the division going forward i mean I mean, respect to, you know, the older legends, but you get to that age where you you, you got to give it up. I mean, you got to hang up those gloves. I mean, I know they talk about fighters, you know, that's all they know, but, uh, you know, it, it is a young man's game, I think, at the end of the day. Um, you know, nine out of ten fights is always going to be a young man's game. So I'm excited to see what the 135 division is going to be, and I'm very excited to see where you're going to be ending, ending up in the next couple of years. I, I think you have a bright future ahead of you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm ready to get in there and make my mark for sure. Awesome. And do you have a statement for the 135 division? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm coming, man. 2021 is the year. <laughs> One, 2021 is the year for Nate Manis, man. All right. Well, uh, I, I hope uh, I hope you have a uh, great, uh, ha- happy New Year's and, uh, and stay safe out there. And uh, thank you for coming on. And uh, we'll hope to see you fight soon, man. Happy New Year's, man. I appreciate you having me on. We'll do it again sometime.